One team is getting a little bit closer to a district title in District 2-5A. Another gets a key win, and we have a new team sitting atop District 3-2A. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Football Fever. You're brought to you by LISD TV and LoneStarVarsity.com, your source for high school football here on the South Plains. Travis Cram here, and with me as always is George Watson of the Avalanche Journal. And George, let's kick right into it. A big, some big games around the District 2-5A last weekend. Coronado and Butch Henderson get a big win. Yeah, they uh, get a big win to stay in the district race, uh, beating Tascosa. Uh, you know, I, I did the friendship game, but I went by and saw the first half of that one, and just you know, what an outstanding job. You know, that's the best I think that the Coronado offense has looked maybe all season long. You know, and that might include their game against Odessa and, and you know some of the games early in the season. They were just uh, on fire. Chris Camp was having an outstanding game. Shinny Wilkinson, you know, was catching everything in sight, and they were really moving the ball against you know Tascosa and, and playing the way that I thought they were capable of playing all along and the way they needed to play and you know to be able to stay in this district race but now you know they they've uh, they've got some uh, you know uh, a tough game ahead this week and things are really really on the line coming up this week but at least there is still in position 3 weeks to go you know to 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 maybe get uh, if things go right you know get you know maybe get one of those playoff spots and you mentioned Chris Camp 446 yards four touchdowns all the Shaney Wilkinson yeah. we'll learn a little bit more about him later on in the show another team of course Monterey sitting on that borderline trying to get into the playoffs they suffer a big loss to Odessa High. Yeah, a, a tough loss for for uh, Monterey. Uh, you know, one that they really couldn't afford. But you know that they're going up against an outstanding Odessa team. The problem is, you know, four turnovers, a lot of them in the first half, and they get behind early. You know, they come back in the second half and make it a game, but just don't have enough to be able to push it through and and come back and get and get the the big victory. And now they they're going to have to uh, win out. You know, and the, and still hope for some help. You know, not not everything is in their hands anymore. So you know, it's it's a real real tough time for Monterey and, and, and a real strong possibility that they could uh, they could be missing the playoffs for the first time in nine years. Yeah, you know, Monterey had four turnovers in the game. Bradley Marquez for Odessa High gets 236 rushing yards and a pair of touchdowns to go with it. Other scores from around that district, you have Odessa Permian wins over Lubbock High, 35 to 14. They keep rolling to stay undefeated in the district. Midland League gets a 35 to 14 win over San Angelo Central. And Midland High, 53 to 49 in double overtime against the Sandys. And a huge high scoring game for them, but now keeps the playoff picture a little bit higher in 2-5A with Midland and Odessa Permian staying on top of it. Yeah, that's a, that was a big win for Midland, a, a big road win. And it really affects a lot of the things that happens below the Bulldogs. Right now, you know, even though, you know, Odessa Permian's sitting there at number four in the state or, or you know, somewhere around there, I, I think, and, you know, and they're sitting there at the top of the district undefeated. Midland High is that, the team that actually has clinched a playoff spot out of 2-5A now because, you know, they're, they're undefeated in district, you know, but the, but the teams that they've had to play or the teams they've got left to play, they all hold tiebreakers over or, t or teams that can't catch them. So they're actually sitting there, uh, you know, with, with a playoff spot clinched. Now, that said, Permian, uh, Odessa and Midland Lee can all do the same by the end, you know, by the end of Friday. If they win, then those other three playoff spots in, in District 25A will be uh, will be uh, will be sewn up, and that will leave Lubbock and Amarillo out of the picture. And, and and a source told me that that would be the first time in the history of history that neither Amarillo or Lubbock had a team in the uh, in the uh, highest classification playoffs ever. Wow. That, that I mean, you know, I, I know it's been since '92 that no that they, a 5A team from Lubbock has missed the playoffs. You know, there's there's been at least one, you know, from from uh, from the 5A ranks in Lubbock to make it every year since '92. And I think, you know, talking with Lance Landert up in Amarillo, the uh, sports editor up there for the Globe News, he was telling me that, that just a few years ago that it was Tascos and Amarillo that didn't make it. So it hadn't been that long. But you know, for for you know, for all those five combined. Apparently it has been a while, and, and it's, it's a real possibility because Lee, Lee is playing Monterey this week. Uh, Coronado's got to face Odessa Permian. Odessa High's got a, a, a pretty big game, so it, it's, it, could be a, it could be a deal. By, by the time we wake up Saturday, you know, that district could be set. All right, so, so we'll get into this weekend's games in a little while here. You talked a little bit about Permian Coronado facing off. That's going to be a big one. District 1-3A, Estacado taking on Leveland. Augustine and Biggity, another big game for the Matadors. Co Coach Cervantes gets another win for his team. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, a, a interesting uh, you know season right now for for Estacado. I mean that you know they struggled in the nine district obviously, you know, but the, and, and the offense hasn't been as, as explosive as it has been in the past. But I mean, but they're getting the job done. I mean, they they got the stops when they needed against Perryton two weeks ago. They got the stops the, uh, this past week against Leveland. Got the big drive late in the game, like you said, Augustine and Biggity with the with the rushing touchdown. 
33 seconds left that put them up uh, 20 to 16. So, you know, I know, I know Coach Trevance is probably, you know, he's probably having to take some blood pressure medicine right now the way this team is. <laughs> The way this team has kind of gone with him, but the, you know, you know, the, the Escada Matadors, a, a big win and sets up a big game this week that we'll talk about later on. All right, going into District 4 4 a and a team that just keeps rolling every week and we keep talking about is the Friendship Tigers. They get over more than 340 rushing yards in a game. Yeah. They get the win over Hereford. Yeah, it, it was pretty evident uh, early on that, that uh, Friendship, I think, was going to, you know, really control this game. You know, you know, they, they slept walk there at the first of the game. Hereford, you know, pooch kick that landed right in front of them, bounced right back to Hereford, and they got it at about the 30-yard line and went on in and scored. And Hereford's up 7-0, and you're thinking, well, maybe this, you know, this might be a, a struggle for Friendship. But then Friendship gets the ball right back, nine plays, go right down to score. I mean, they're getting seven, eight yards a clip with Brian Sykes and Landon Lamb and, and running the ball really well. They get a big field goal you know, at 10-7, then get, then get a touchdown. You know, and, you know, before halftime, they're up 17-7, and they're, and they're pretty much in control. Hereford comes back, makes it 17-14, but Friendship gets it back, and they, and, and they really, uh, you know, control the game from there. Really impressed. You know, the, the big thing that turned that game was Friendship's defense got four straight three and outs in the second quarter that allowed that 7-7 game to expand to 17-7 and, and, and really allowed Friendship to get enough of a cushion to make that uh, to make it a, a, a convincing win. All right, so the number 10 Tigers stay undefeated on the season. Two other teams that were undefeated going into last weekend, Littlefield and Idaloo in that big 3-2-A battle. Littlefield got the best of them. They get the best of Sean Reagan picking him off four times in the game. They, they're now in first place. Yeah, it's funny. I was, I was doing my radio show this last week with, with Steve Dale uh, from Sportsline, and, and we had uh, Coach Taylor on, and, and we and we tried to say, <laughs> Coach, you, you know, you know, did you, you know, did you have an aneurysm or something? You put the ball in the air so much. You threw for 207 yards, and, and Sean threw for four touchdowns, you know, the, the week before. Well, now he threw for four interceptions. So I think maybe Coach, uh, Coach Taylor will kind of keep it on the ground maybe a little more. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, credit Littlefield and their, and their defense for, for being able to shut down Idaloo's running game and Idaloo's offense enough and, you know, getting some turnovers, things like that. Just a great job by Littlefield. You know, and them running the ball, too. Obviously, you saw the game, you know, and, and, and you know what went on. So yeah, just a great job by Littlefield, and now really kind of you know kind of puts them up at the top of uh, of the three two A district. Yeah, and what was really impressive to watch, I think, was like you mentioned, Coach Huseman talked about that defense and the fact that they had the ability to shut down Tanner Cook, to shut down Clint McDowell, and get a hold of their running game and force them to pass the ball. That made all the difference in the world, and the Barrios do the rest for Littlefield Wildcats. All right, when we come back, we'll find out who gets this week's honor as this week's AJ City Player of the Week right here on the Fever. <laughs> 